Hi, I'm Brian Costley of Sargent and Greenleaf, and today I'm going to demo an installation of the new S&G Model 2890 Pedestrian Door Lock, or PDL. It's equipped with an S&G 2740 electronic combination lock. We're going to be doing our installation on a hollow metal door with a hollow metal frame. Uh, you may be installing this on other doors. If your door is a sound attenuating door or an RF attenuating door, It'll have special features built into it, and you'll undoubtedly need special adapter brackets, which should be available through the security door manufacturer or through that manufacturer's distributors. On the 2890 lock, there's a thumb turn, and this knob controls uh, a bolt holdback feature. You can either leave it as a thumb turn, or we can replace that with a key-operated cylinder, depending on what the customer's needs are. It's very simple to change this out, and it's a good idea to do it before you begin your installation. We'll look on the back side of this device, and you can see the cavity where the thumb turn resides. I take a very small flat blade screwdriver, and I'm feeling for a little spring-loaded retainer that protrudes uh, from the edge of this thumb turn. When I depress that, I can pull out the thumb turn. Then I take my key cylinder. The key cylinder has a half moon spring loaded brass retainer on the rear. I can depress it with my screwdriver as I push this cylinder into place. When I get it oriented correctly, the retainer seats as it should. Now we have a key operated cylinder in place of the thumb turn. The next step is to decide where we want to mount the 2890 PDL on the door. ADA guidelines say that uh, lock hardware should not be above 48 inches from the finished floor, but you also have to take into account other hardware that's already installed on the door. We don't want to crowd uh, this lock with the uh, 2890 mechanism. So we're going to go up a little bit above that. I'm going to put the center of the strike at about 51 inches on this door. Whenever I go above the recommended 48 inches, I need to get authorization from the person who's in charge of the secured area. There are four different strikes available for the 2890 lock, depending on whether your door is in swing, out swing. There's also a strike for double doors. This is an out swing application, so we're going to use a number two strike. In your instructions, there will be a diagram that shows applications and the different strikes that should be used for each one of those applications. And I suggest you follow that. The written instructions are always to be followed. The information in this video is more or less a guide, but the ins written instructions are always the final authority in an installation. Here we have our number two strike. We've marked the height at which we want to mount it on the door frame. And I also need to space it off of the closed door and I'll use the plate that goes underneath the 2890 lock mechanism on the inside in order to space that out. I can hold everything in place just with a little pressure and as I do so I will mark the center mounting screw location only through the strike. We can see it mounted on a piece of masking tape that we've affixed to the door. With a pin punch, we'll mark the hole that we scribe through the center hole in the number two strike. Now our drill bit uh, won't tend to wander as we place this hole in the frame. Well, I'm going to place the screw, a flathead screw, through the center mounting hole in the number two strike. Our hole is already bored. We'll get rid of our piece of masking tape. If this frame had been mortar filled or concrete filled, once we penetrated the outer skin with our 1 8 inch high speed bit, we would have switched to a 1 8 inch masonry bit in order to clear out the mortar or the concrete behind the strike. We want to make sure it's nice and square with the door before we use our template. Now that we have our strike mounted, I'll take the template that's included with the 2890 lock kit. And you'll notice it has a cutout in it that goes right over 
the lip of the strike and that tells me how to position it and I've got a piece of masking tape here so I'll fasten it down into position and now I can put a few more pieces of tape over it so that it will stay in place as I mark and drill my holes. Before I begin drilling holes I want to make sure that my template is level on the door. You can see that we've got seven locations indicated for holes and we'll uh, use a pin punch to uh, help locate the center of those before we start drilling. These are actually the two most important mounting holes and of course our spindle hole is important as well. Uh, the others we'll use a drill guide later. We can either opt to mark these with a pin punch or not. It really doesn't make any difference. We're going to drill 1 8 inch holes at this location and this location and also drill our spindle hole. If this were a wooden door we would drill these 1 8 inch holes 1 inch deep. Since this is a hollow metal door we just need to go through the inside skin only. The spindle hole needs to be one half inch diameter. I'm going to start with a 1 8 inch pilot drill all the way through the door to help guide my larger diameter bit to uh, get the hole to the required half inch size. Now that we have our two 1 8 inch holes drilled into the door and our half inch spindle hole that goes all the way through the door, we can remove the template. We want to take either a file or a rotary burr and clean off the rough edges from our spindle hole. There's going to be a brass spindle that goes through this hole. So sharp edges really don't present a problem. It's just a matter of uh, taking them off. It's a little bit more professional installation. And if the burrs aren't there, then they won't create any problems down the road for us. So once we're convinced that that's smoothed off, we'll take our lock body. And remember, we have a plate that goes underneath it. Make sure your spindle hole through the plate is lined up with the spindle hole in the lock body. We can drop one of the mounting screws provided in the kit through both the lock body and the plate. Make sure that that's all the way through and now we can mount that. We need to open the door slightly and we can mount that into one of the holes that we've drilled. We've mounted the lock at these two screw locations. I'm going to check and make sure that they're good and tight. Now we need to check and uh, see if the lock lines up with the strike. I need to retract the bolt first and as I close I notice that my strike is just a little bit high. That's why we only put one screw in the strike. We have an adjustment, a uh, small amount of adjustment that's possible and we'll use that. Move the strike slightly downward as we finish up our installation. But our next step is going to be to use this drill guide in this hole, this one, one down here, one over here to drill four holes completely through the door using a 6 inch long 13 64 drill bit. From the outside of the door we can see the half inch spindle hole we drilled through from the inside and also our four 13 64 holes that we drilled from the inside using the drill guide through the lock body. We're going to mount this plate on the outside of the door and it will through bolt through these holes into the screws that come from the inside of the door through the lock body. We need to enlarge these four holes to 7 16 to accommodate these legs. Since this is a hollow metal door, we'll just have to put those holes through the outer skin at 7 16 of an inch. 
If this were uh, a wooden door, for instance, we would need to drill to a depth that would accommodate these mounting studs on the inside of the plate. You can simply measure these or you can put your drill bit right up against them and put a piece of tape on your drill bit so you'll know how deep to drill the holes. But again, on these we're just going to go through the outer skin. We have an option of two different plates to use on the outside of the door. You can see the raised mounting studs go right through the holes that we enlarged in the outside of the door to mount the plate. This is the thinner of the two plates. This is for a class N installation. It's a relatively thin plate with a cover over the top of it. And if we were to use this, our dial ring screws would attach right into these holes top and bottom in the plate. Our second option is this thicker drill resistant plate. As you can see, it's, it is much thicker. It has multiple layers of drill resistant barrier material incorporated into it. The cover goes over the top and then it mounts just the same as the thinner plate through the enlarged holes through the outside of the door. And we use this plate, and this is the one we're going to use for our demonstration installation. We'll slide the dial ring for the lock over these two studs and then use 832 nuts with lock washers to affix the dial ring to the front of this plate. Now we can go to the inside of the door and use the socket drive screws provided with a 9 uh, heck wrench, which is also in your kit, and we'll fasten the four screws into the studs that are on the inside of the door at this point. The studs should line up with no problem. We'll tighten that screw, since I've already got three in place, and then we'll go back and check and make sure that each of the others is tight as well. Now we can put the cover over the exterior drill resistant plate and it's time to take our 2740 lock dial ring and we can loosely attach that We put it over the two studs that extend from the drill resistant plate. We've got two lock washers and two 832 nuts that we thread onto these studs. And again, we'll fasten those just tight enough so that we can still retain some movement in the dial ring because we're going to set the alignment as closely as we can. We need to stabilize the cam of the lock while we insert our homemade alignment tool. So we'll carefully remove the cover of the lock body and set it aside for now. I've got one finger on the drive cam to keep it from rotating as I install my homemade alignment tool. I'm threading this 5 16 by 40 thread per inch section of spindle a few turns into the drive cam inside the 2740 lock. Now I tighten my bushing as I do so and make sure that there's no play or decreasing play in this dial ring for the 2740 lock. And when I get it just where I want it, I can take a nut driver and I can go ahead and snug these holding nuts down so that the dial ring won't move. And now I can unthread and remove my dial ring alignment tool. Time to install the dial at least long enough to mark the correct length. First thing that goes on the spindle is the spring, then the metal washer, and now the plastic washer that's in your locks accessory pack. Now holding the drive cam from inside so that it does not rotate, I'll thread the spindle through the drive cam. And I'm going to turn the dial into the drive cam just far enough 
so that this surface of the dial is almost but not quite flush with this raised ridge around the outside of the dial ring. I've got the dial just about where I want it in the ring. And we can see how much excess spindle we need to cut. We'll take a marker and mark where the spindle first comes through the drive cam. We'll mark it in a couple of different locations in case one mark gets rubbed off. And that's where we'll cut the spindle. And after we cut it, we'll chamfer the end and deburr it. Now that I've cut and beveled the end of my spindle, I'm going to turn it into the drive cam. Now I want to get the drive cam with the gate or the opening in the edge of the drive cam underneath this section of the lever, what we call the lever nose. Now I'm going to put zero at the opening index on the outside of the door. And we can see that our spline keyways are pretty much lined up in this orientation, which tells us which way we have to put our spline key in. And we have to do it in such a way that one of these two screw holes in the spline key lines up with the single screw hole to receive that little screw in the drive cam itself. I'll take this little cut piece of spindle and I'll use it to tap in our spline key. And I need to make sure that the spline key is completely seated so that its uh, underside is touching the top surface of the drive cam. We need to make sure that as the drive cam turns, nothing comes in contact with the underside of the lever. Now we've got a tiny spline key screw it's a 256 screw. We'll use a small magnetic driver. And we take a very small amount of blue Loctite included in your kit. And we put just a little bit of that on the tip of the screw. And then we install the spline key screw until it's snug. Do not over tighten it. Remember this is a 256 screw and if you tighten too much it will strip out with very little provocation. So we just want it down so that it's nice and snug and then the Loctite can do its part. We have two batteries to install into the cover. Anytime we're handling the cover and it's off of the lock we wear a static wrist strap or a grounding wrist strap so that we do not introduce ESD into the circuitry. The first battery we're going to install is a coin cell. The positive side goes up. If you install this battery wrong side up, even for just a fraction of a second, throw it away. That battery is undependable. Now we'll take the second battery, which is a camera type lithium battery, and it goes into the holder up here. You notice we got one beep. The circuitry is now doing an internal battery test and after about 10 seconds it should emit a second beep telling us the batteries are okay. We heard the second beep, now it's okay to put the cover in place. Now we'll use the cover attaching screws. The long screw goes here according to the label and the shorter screw goes in this location. Make sure that your lock washers are present before you install those screws. Note that now that we have power on the lock, every time I turn the dial, I get a three beep signal, pause, three beep signal, pause, three beep signal. And that's telling me that this lock has never been calibrated, which would be expected for a brand new installation. So we need to take a setup module, plug it into the lock, and calibrate this lock to zero. Here's our setup module with a single 9 volt battery installed for operation. The plug at the end of the setup module cable has a very small arrow in it. 
and that will align with a small arrow cast into the cover that shows you how to orient the plug when you connect it to the lock. The module has a magnetic base, so when we calibrate, we can simply stick the module to the door face. Now let's go to the other side of the door and actually do the calibration. Now we'll calibrate the lock to zero. At the setup module, I press quickly to advance to each of the icons. When I get to the calibrate by dialing to the right icon, I hold and press the button until I get some brief lights. Now I'm getting a flashing yellow. And that means turn the dial right to zero. Stop exactly on zero. Very carefully, quick press of the button. I get a momentary green light and then a blinking yellow, which means I got your input, please do it again. So we go again exactly to zero, quick press, get the quick green and the blinking yellow, that means do it again. Normally we have to calibrate to zero at least three times. Now we get the green light but no yellow and the module turns itself off. That means we've successfully calibrated by dialing right to zero. Now we need to calibrate left to zero. So when we get to that icon on the module, we press and hold. We get a brief uh, illumination of the lights. That tells us turn to the left. Stop when zero is exactly on the opening index. Give a brief press. We got the momentary green light, the blinking yellow. That means do it again. If we miss zero, we can simply go around again to it as many times as it takes. We'll go exactly to zero, press briefly. We've got the quick green and the blinking yellow. That means do it again. Oh, I missed it slightly, so I'll go around again. I have to be very precise. Now at zero, a quick press. I got the green light, not the yellow. The module turns itself off. It indicates we've successfully calibrated by dialing to the left. So this lock is calibrated. I can reach around, unplug the module, and get a quick beep. Now I'm going to check the combination, and the factory combination is 50-25-50. I'll dial at least four times left. It can be more, but at least four times left to 50. I'll dial right at least three times to 25. There's once, there's twice, there's three times. But if I pass it when I meant to stop on it, I'll just go around again. I can go around again. It's at least three times right to 25, but it can be more. Once I've stopped on 25, it's two times left to 50. There's once, there's twice. But if I miss it, again, I can go around one more time. Stop on 50, dial back to the right, and the dial comes to a positive stop. That indicates that the lock bolt is retracted and our lock is operating as it should. We knew from a previous check that our strike would have to come down just a fraction of an inch, and uh, we've adjusted the height very slightly, uh, drilled and attached it uh, through one screw up at this corner because we were able to do that because we have some room for adjustment in our center screw location. And now I'm, I've marked this hole, I'm going to mark the others, and drill all of the attaching screw hole locations. One of the last things we need to do is install the dust cover over the dial ring. We'll take uh, a little bit of blue Loctite included in your kit. This is the same Loctite that we used on the spline key screw. And we'll run the dust cover screw into place. There are two of these, one on each side. So as soon as we get this one installed, We'll take the other screw and install it on the other side exactly the same way. Our strike has been adjusted. We've tested the function of the lock several times uh, with someone inside the area. Now I'm going to dial the combination, check it one more time, and explain the function of the blocking feature. 
the dial combination. It's on the factory default to 50, 25, 50. Door opens. For the purpose of our demonstration, we put the turn knob back in and taken out the key cylinder. You can see now that the arrow is not pointing towards the blocking function uh, as it's indicated on this metallic label. With the combination dialed into the lock and the bolt retracted, I can turn this knob so it points to the block function. And now I cannot spin off the combination from outside. So if you're inside this area and you've unlocked the lock and the combination lock is open, its bolt is retracted, and the uh, uh, 2890 bolt is also retracted, if you turn this knob to the blocking position, the combination cannot be spun off. So if we close this door, the 2890 will not lock. However, if I turn the blocking knob away from the blocking function, now I'm able to spin off the combination on the lock, and when I close the door, it will lock securely. And that's the function of the blocking knob. This concludes our demonstration installation of the Sargent and Greenleaf Model 2890 PDL, or Pedestrian Door Lock. And uh, every installation is a little bit different, so sometimes you, uh, you have to be creative and deviate a little bit from what you've seen in the video here today. Remember to always follow the written instructions that come packaged with the product. Those will always have the most up-to-date information, and those instructions are the final authority on how to install this unit.